tonight's conversation. Use the hashtag pizza politics to follow our post. Pizza and politics is our chance to dialogue with leaders and influence in our city, state, region, and tonight I am delighted to have Congressman Lacey Clay from Missouri's 1st District. In a, a midterm election cycle, when anti-incumbent sentiment is riding high, Congressman Clay can offer a valuable insight about the current tone in Washington and how that impacts voters at home. Tonight, we'll hear the Congressman's insight on the challenges, thrills, disappointments, and hopes of and for public service in the current climate. Congressman, you certainly bring a tremendous perspective to your many years of public service in the state of Missouri. Congressman Clay was first elected to the U.S. Uh, House of Representatives in 2000. Prior to his current elected role, he served for 17 years in the Missouri House and the Missouri Senate. In fact, the Congressman and I came into the legislature together uh, a couple years before 2000, if I remember correctly. Uh, but we were good friends then, and we've remained very good friends ever since. Presently, he serves as chairman of the House Subcommittee on Information Policy, Census, and National Archives, and sits on the Oversight and Governmental Reform Committee, which has major responsibility for the operations of the federal government. Glad somebody does. He also serves on the Financial Services Committee, which has jurisdiction over banking, insurance, investment firms, pensions, consumer credit, and capital markets. And we've been hearing all about those for the last uh, couple of years, if I, if my recollection, recollection is correct. So Congressman Clay, as a former legislator of Missouri, a very, very powerful political leader in this country, not just in Missouri, and the congressman that serves in some very, very important committees. Delighted to have you with us this evening. Congressman Clay. Thank you so much. Thank you uh, so much, Governor, for inviting me to uh, politics and pizza, two of my favorite topics, <laughs> not in any particular order. Uh, and, and it's great to be back at Webster University, uh, as well as great to be back here with you and all the people that came to see me. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, we started our careers together. Uh, we were young and green uh, in the Missouri House, uh, but it certainly was a, a, a training ground for me uh, for what I do now. Back then, Jefferson City was a much different place. Uh, there was decorum, there was civility. You don't have much of that now in Jefferson City, nor Washington. Well, we will get into that. Uh, let me let me also uh, thank you for this invitation. Uh, we I know you've been trying to get me here for a few years since you started. This program, and I, I'm so pleased to be here. And uh, I guess you want to start off with the current political climate. Uh, well, I'm so glad. First of all, I'm so glad I'm back at home. I get to stay home for about six weeks before we have to go back on November 15th for a lame duck session uh, back to Washington, back to the Capitol. Uh, but, but it's better for me to be on the ground in my district, uh, feeling the pulse of the people, uh, getting to understand uh, what it is they expect of us. And, and, and I'll say this, that after uh, November 2nd, uh, people of the 1st Congressional District return me to Washington, uh, I will go back and do what they expect of us. And that is to uh, check our weapons at the door and begin to govern in the best interest of the American people. That's what people expect after a national election. Now, that did not happen after November of 2008. Uh, uh, 
the, 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 the Democrats finally captured the White House after eight years, and we, we, we controlled both houses of the Congress. However, we have a, a, a hybrid called the U.S. Senate. Uh, that is what you have, what you find out about the U.S. Senate is that one person can stop the show. One person can filibuster in order to prevent a nominee from passing through, uh, in order to prevent legislation from passing. Um, when you when you think, of, although they, there is a rule that that you can vote on closure. You need, for, um, you need 60 votes in order to achieve closure. Uh, and we've been able to do that with some monumental pieces of legislation. Uh, when, we, when, we, when President Obama inherited uh, the position he's in now, uh, we were losing 800,000 jobs per month. And that wasn't under President Obama. It was under the former administration. Uh, uh, since then, we've been able to stop the bleeding. We've been able to create 100,000 private sector jobs per month. Uh, and, and yes, unemployment is still at 9.6%, and that's not good. But we have offered initiative after initiative 16 times to give small businesses tax credits, to give them incentives to create jobs. And we've been stopped 15 out of 16 times by the Republican Party. Uh, I mean, so it's not a good environment in Washington. Uh, and no, no one wants to be conciliatory. No one wants to compromise. No one wants to sit down and work out this difficult, complex legislation. I think about the debate on health care. Uh, it, it took us over a year to get that monumental legislation passed. But remember, uh, it's the first modern-day president to talk about a national health care system was Harry Truman from right here in Missouri over 60 years ago. And he talked about us, the country deserving to have a national health care system. Uh, and, and, and this year, we finally got it done. Uh, we, were, we were able to capture, to, to cover uh, 30 million more Americans and provide them health care coverage. We were able to stop insurance companies from eliminating you or knocking you off uh, your health care coverage because you, had, because you got sick or you had a pre-existing condition. We were able uh, to allow parents to carry their, their children to the age of 26 on their plans. And, 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 and that's a big boost for young people, especially those coming out of college, trying to decide whether they're going to grad school or going to start their career. That's one less expense they have to worry about, along with their student loan and, and where they're going to live. Uh, so I think that, that, that we were able to uh, accomplish something through the past of, of, of uh, a national health care plan. Uh, we also must talk about the stimulus. Talk about $841 billion and what we got out of it. I know that for my district, we have now uh, spent about uh, $700 million. We have saved or created over 2,300 jobs. We have we have we have shovel bedded project, uh, and uh, that caused that stimulus helped us prevented us from having a second Great Depression uh, because of, of of the condition of the economy at the time. Uh, we have uh, the uh, Lilly Ledbetter legislation which uh, allows for, <coughs> which, which prohibits discrimination against women uh, in, in pay. Or, or that they do the same job that a man does and they should be able to get the 
same pay. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, and, and, and so, I mean, here, here, here's what I would say to any American who hasn't decided how they're going to vote in November. You need to ask yourself, are you better off today than you were two years ago? And as far as a country, I say we are. As for future generations and forward thinking, I say we're much better off. Here we have a president who is, wound down, is winding down two wars. One of them we never had to be in. One of them was based on false pretenses. And the other one was mismanaged. And now we are winding those, up, those down. And, and look, this is about priority. This is about the priorities of the country. What are our priorities? Are they to uh, uh, wage war in a foreign land, destroy a culture for nothing, and then go back and dump our tax dollars into those countries to rebuild them after we bombed them to smithereens? I don't think that's what our priorities should be. Uh, or should we refocus our priorities? on this country, which is what this Democratic mad Congress has done, as well as this president. Uh, we, we are now focused on how we make college more affordable for all Americans, uh, how we stop the banks from ripping off people who have to pay back these student loans. Uh, and, 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 and so that's what our priorities have been, been more oriented towards the American people. Now, if you want to go backwards, put the car in R there. Put it in reverse. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and go punch that R, okay? But I want to go forward. I want to punch that D. I want to put the car in drive. We, I mean, look, we've already driven into the ditch, okay? And now we need to get out of the ditch. And that's what this election is about. Uh, if they'll tell you, the Republicans will tell you, well, we're going to create jobs. No, you had eight years to create jobs. And we were bleeding jobs to the tune of 700 to 800,000 per month. So you didn't create jobs with all of these tax credits for business. That didn't do it. What's going to do it is to, to look at our infrastructure in this country and realize we need to rebuild some of this. Look in this area. Look at our sewer system. Sewer system in St. Louis over 100 years old. It's time to invest in this country. Look at the roads. Look at the bridges. Look at the railroad. How about some high-speed rail, Governor? You know, this is what we need to invest in, not in weapon systems <coughs> to blow up some other country. Let's invest in this country, in the future of this country, Invest in young people and, 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 and stop, uh, stop, stop, stop letting, uh, letting these 15 second sound bites dictate what we are about. We, we are better than that. Okay, we are much better than that. And so, uh, you know, this is, this is tough times politically <coughs> uh, when you think about it. We all have to defend. There are no safe, no such thing as a safe congressional seat. Mine is not safe. <coughs> Nobody. Because it, it, it all comes down to what people decide when they go in that <coughs> And uh, I, I'm willing to make the case to ask people to send me back. Uh, but we all, but all of us have to, all 435 members of the House have to decide that. All uh, 30 something senators who are up have to decide. And the 37 governors have to make the case to the American people that they are where they are representing them. Uh, so, what I'll do is I'll stop there. I'm sure there's some generation discussion.